So Matt, I, uh, a real secret, I've been looking forward to meeting you much more so than the people I met at the NFL. I just want to let you know that. I appreciate it. So it's a pleasure to spend time with you and meet your wife, Jessica. Do you bring her to most of your meetings for moral support? No, Kellen from the Chiefs just offered up a really nice little uh, time to go to the NFL draft tonight. So she, of course, just skipped work and came down to do that. So she's not really here to support me, just to go to the draft tonight. <laughs> nice to meet you, by the way. Um, you have a unique background. Um, road less traveled, student athlete, and um, financial auditor, and then you became head of sports marketing. Uh, I'd love to know that kind of journey and how you pulled that off. Yeah, so a, a little bit high V. So there's a few folks in here that are from the KC area or some that we actually um, work with on some sponsorships and different things. So uh, it's a grocery train, and I'll talk about uh, throughout, I guess, the day here a little bit, um, in an eight-state area. And so the great thing about high V is that once you get into high V, there are so many opportunities to do well and move up within the company. It's kind of what they, they've just been about for 93 years that they've been there. And so I am a finance accounting major, and I started at High V um, in auditing and then moved into to be the director of financial reporting. And so I would have never thought that I would be doing sports marketing. I thought I was just, just an accountant with the Excel spreadsheet. And one day our CEO came down and said, hey, I'm going to have you run sports marketing for us. And when we talk here a little bit today, you'll see we do quite a bit in sports marketing. And so uh, it was a real honor. I'm thrilled. It's way better than accounting. Uh, I can tell you that much. I will tell you that the little knock that I think the reason that he picked me is I, I had the opportunity to play in the MLS for a few years. And so uh, I didn't play a whole lot. I sat on the bench. And so I think that the CEO just thought that I would, I got to see a lot of assets and see things in the stadium. And so I'd be a good person to, to be able to point out what would be good for the fan base to see. So. That's great. How long did you play in the MLS? I played for two years and then uh, decided it was, it was time to start a career and, and move on from that. So I don't know if you guys know a lot about the MLS. It's unfortunately not the NFL where there is a lot of money for rookies and other people. So um, it just, uh, at the time, it was a different world than what it is today. So I grew up uh, in New York City. And we really don't have supermarkets in New York City. And once we had kids, we moved out to the suburbs. And uh, I discovered what a supermarket really is. And it was incredible. Um, wide aisles and open space and bakeries and delis and florists. And um, I have great reverence for companies like yourself who have prospered and um, kind of continued on in a business which I think is a tough one, especially in post-COVID where uh, supply chain shortages, labor shortages, and then this inflation. So how, how has IV been able to be so successful given these strong headwinds? Yeah, so this kind of leads into where I can talk about Hy-Vee a little bit. So we, we are a 93-year-old company with 80,000 employees. So if you're from the Midwest, you've probably heard of us, but for a lot of folks that aren't, um, they don't realize the magnitude of how big of a company we really are. Uh, we'll reach about $14 billion in sales this year. Um, and so our, our big thing over 93 years of being in existence has been customer service. So we really want to pride ourselves on being able to take care of the customer. That's if they ask a question, we walk them to where it's at in the aisle. Um, and then building stores that really can be a one-stop shop. And so uh, people are busy, right, as, as life's gone on and um, kids' activities take up a lot of time. Here's a place you can stop, get everything you need from your floral to take home to your wife. you got your bakery. Uh, you've got your normal grocery items. We have cosmetics in our stores. We have shoes with DSW we did a partnership with. Um, so really just we want to be there for the customer, make their lives much easier uh, and healthier and happier is kind of our motto with what we go with. Great. So my understanding is 32 million Americans go to a supermarket each day. Um, and there's lots of store formats. How do, what's your distinction? How do you get this um, um, tremendous amount of shoppers and customers in your, in your stores? Yeah, well, I, I wish it was that easy to know exactly <laughs> what we do to, to keep them and everything. Really, we look at different models within our store. So there's places where we're in Des Moines or we're in KC uh, where it's an 80,000 to 100,000 square foot store. Where we can offer more of those things because it is more fast paced and there's a bigger population. Um, but we also look at formats too. We go into small stores, our small cities in Iowa, Wisconsin, and we build a 20,000 20, square foot store um, that just gives them an opportunity to have things that they wouldn't have normally or have to drive 15, 20 minutes to go to. So again, we just try to be there for the customers. 
keep studying trends to see what they want, what they need. Obviously, you talked about a few things right now with inflation and different things. So our model kind of changes now, too, of how do we maintain these customers? How do we keep customer share? Um, looking at price points, what drives the people to come into our store? Um, and obviously, at the same time, you still have to be a profitable store sure. and, and, and run the business. It seems that given the current economy, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that there's three types of shoppers. There's those who are about value, price-driven. There are those who are about all about convenience. And then those, perhaps, who are still doing really well, and they're about indulgence. What, what, are, what are the kind of new expectations and changing behaviors of your, of your customers? Yeah, I mean, I think you hit it right there with, with three of them there. You did your studying on that. So um, obviously, convenience is a big piece, especially, again, I talk about different things in, in different areas that you're in. So in a small town, convenience maybe isn't as much because it's, I mean, it's there. It's the only store they're going to go to. Um, but what you just said there with inflation, the value has probably been the biggest thing right now, driving, and how do you get them in there um, and get them to buy your other stuff as well. So, right, you're gonna have the hot item, the strawberries or 99 cents, whatever, to get them in the door, but then that's our job as, as the best merchants in the United States to get them to buy everything else, the 5.99 muffins and other stuff to, to build that basket up and help continue to build our market share. Great. Um, why don't we shift the conversation to sports marketing and just kind of a broad question. Um, why sports to attract customers? Is it uh, general awareness, branding? drive to store promotion, how, how do you deploy sports? Yeah, I think we get into to sports is exactly used. I think it got mentioned earlier by Laura. It's really a community thing too, right? Sports, whether it's football, it's basketball, it's soccer, it just seems to pull and unite people together. So I think we have sports in a lot of different areas that we, the reason we do them is for different reasons, right? And so uh, when I say that, I'll just kind of go over, he had a nice chart with Rocket Morgan, I should have had that, with uh, <laughs> what we have. We're very similar to what they have. So. In the NFL, we partner with the Chiefs, the Vikings, and the Packers. Uh, we have the Timberwolves for the NBA. And then pretty much in an eight-state area with Learfield and, and D1 colleges, we have every D1 college in our trade area except for Minnesota, University of Minnesota. Um, and so I think all of those have different reasons on why you partner with them. And so for me, I'll start with college. There's a piece. There's always the drive to, drive to sales. We've got to push our retail, right, or we don't exist. There's the piece of just building our brand awareness, which is gonna help for us to survive. And then there's the community piece, which has been talked about a lot today. And so um, from that standpoint, the colleges to me are more a play of, sure, you're gonna get some brand and we're gonna do some stuff for activation and driving, but it's a whole community play, right? So it's the opportunity uh, when something unfortunate does happen, like a derecho went through the middle of Iowa a couple years ago. And the Iowa football team, the first thing they do is pick up a, a phone to call us and say, hey, could you guys get uh, a couple grills out and some meat and we'll have the football players come show up in front of one of your stores and hand out food and, and do that kind of stuff. And so those are big opportunities for us that we think are great to help build our brand. It's, we're there for the community um, and just show that we're there to support them and hopefully then those customers all come and support us um, throughout the years. Great. Let's, let's stay on the college. I know uh, many of your uh, hundreds of stores are in big college markets. Um, love your perspective. We've heard a couple different things about NIL Love to hear your experience with that. And then um, how you work with universities, um, both from an athlete perspective as well as um, branding to college students. I mean, do, do college students or millennials still go to the physical supermarket? Or is it all online ordering and curbside and different formats? Yeah, so uh, great question. So uh, on, the, on the college standpoint, yes, we need to market to those to those students, and they, yes, they do still come by. One of the big things that you just talked about was Isles Online, which is our e-commerce platform, right? And so that's a, an area for college students that may not have a car in some of these places where they can order and get it. So it's something we really try to brand to them w from that standpoint. Um, and then, you know, we gotta look at the future too. So colleges are important to us, and that's partly why we support them as well, because we wanna get that customer now, right? They're gonna, they're 21 now, not buying a lot, but in 10 years, they're gonna be at home with three kids, and. Um, we want them to be the loyal customer to Hy-Vee at that point. Is so, there brand loyalty in, in, your, in your business? In yeah, your... I think when you talked about the consumer, there's definitely brand loyalty. So I think that you have, uh, um, you know, some of it comes down to where, where your wage is, right? So like if it's someone that, well, inflation's not fun, but they can afford it, they're going to be loyal and convenient to where they want to shop, um, and where they like to get their things. I think where value, value is where it makes it hard for true loyalty because I think there are certainly people that go out today and are truly just looking for the deal. So if that means that they're gonna go into an Aldi one minute and then 
go over to a, a Hy-Vee later and then a Fairway, which is in our market in Iowa. They may do that for the value piece um, there. So I think, yes, we want to get that loyalty. We're trying to get that loyalty. Um, we do a lot of things, which I can we tie into sports here. I'm going to kind of get off task. But to build the loyalty, we have a loyalty customer card, uh, which we use sports in a big way to promote. And so that's a, a card that you can build up. Uh, really started years ago when fuel was really expensive, which then it went down and now it's back up in price. So uh, very advantageous for our customers. So to come in and earn pennies off per gallon. And so it's been a great program for us to, to maintain that loyalty, one, and also for all you guys in here to gain a lot of data on the customer. Um, but we, where we use sports with that, and Kellen will know because we bug them all the time with creative questions and different things, is after every Chiefs game, every Packers game, every Vikings game, every college, we do um, fuel for savings. So basically based on the score. So if the Chiefs score 38 points, then the next day at Hy-Vee you come in on Monday only, and if you spend $38, you get 38 cents off per gallon. And so, I mean, our sales are incredible on the Mondays following up to games and, and doing that. So, um, yeah, we get a lot of great, great press from it. And so... Um, something we've done and will continue to do. So it's amazing when, like, if, if there's, like, on a bye week when they don't have it, I mean, how much sales are down on a Monday com in, in these markets or on a, if there's a college not playing. So um, from that standpoint, from a loyalty, I'll kind of go back on what you said because it's interesting. A lot of people talk about it as NIL. So I was glad H&R Block didn't try to make the claim because we were the first people to sign Caitlin Clark. So I wanted to take, <laughs> I wanted to take credit for that one. So... Um, NIL is interesting as Hy-Vee as a company and someone else mentioned it earlier today too is you, you're putting your your name and your brand with somebody with one person right and so unfortunately in this this day and age with social media and different things if they do something it maybe hurts your brand and image right and so we have traditionally only done and very limited with one-on-one -on -one athletes is is some partnerships with Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes and Kirk Cousins we haven't got in to the college thing we in athletes in general and so when this came around Caitlin made sense because, as you guys have seen, I'm sure you watch, she's a once-in-a-lifetime player, um, great person. She's actually from Des Moines, Iowa, where we're headquartered. So totally made sense for us to do that. So um, NIL is really, really interesting to me at this point now because for two years we didn't really do except for Caitlin. And now all the talk, especially with us, even still in groceries, influencer, influencer, influencer. And so how do we do this influencer piece? And to me, that is the athlete, right? And so... I think we can go into these local markets, into an Iowa City, into an Ames, Iowa, and pull some of these athletes and really have them do that. So um, we're in talks right now with a couple Iowa football players to potentially do some stuff. So I think we'll pick that up in that area um, and, and do what's much more organic, right? Having them capture self-generated stuff going into the store um, and push that. So um, we could talk all day about NIL because I think there's different levels of NIL as well. Like those types of deals I think are great for companies and I, I think it's good for the athlete to use their name, image, and likeness. And then you've gotten to the whole NIL where you're getting into, you know, collectives that the schools are making essentially to, to help with recruiting. So I think there's two different worlds of NIL really. Sure, sure. I think it's really cool what you're doing with athletes um, when we spoke in our prep call in terms of um, product development among your private label brands. Like, maybe you could tell the, the team here about what you did to Travis and his cereal brand. I think that's yeah. incredibly cool. Yeah, so we've actually, and this all ties back to community as well. And so I said, you know, we have community piece, we want to build our brand and, and loyalty, right? And then another big piece is um, driving our sales. And so for these folks that have lived in Kansas City know some of this stuff, we did a, we'd actually launched with Patrick Mahomes a few years ago. So we did a cereal. Um, with Patrick Mahomes, and then a, pro, a part of the proceeds went to a charity. Well, his cereal was just ridiculous, and it was when he was at the height of everything. Well, he's still at the height, he's growing, right? But uh, just blowing up, and so we contributed over $100,000 to 15 of Mahomes Foundation just from this cereal sales. And so, um, you know, then you keep pushing it, right? Because like, what, what's the next cereal we can do, right? And so we did it with uh, Kirk Cousins up in Minneapolis. He obviously didn't drive quite the volume that, that, that Patrick <laughs> would, but still it was, it was good for us. And then it got to the point from... That's a tough market to compete with General it, Mills it, it, in, I'll it, tell it you. Is. But, but what really happened with that then actually was pretty interesting because, you know, we were going out and paying Patrick to be a, you know to sponsor him as well, and that's kind of what led to some of the cereal and, and that kind of stuff. Well, then Adam Thielen for the Vikings calls us and was like, hey, I want a box of cereal. Like, you don't need to pay me anything. Can I just have, you know, part of the proceeds? We'll still make gross on it, and part of the proceeds can go to a charity I pick. So now we're getting an athlete that's going to go out and push, go to Hy-Vee, get this, and we're not... You know, we didn't have to pay him anything out of a budget from, from sports sponsorship side. So that was awesome. And then the Travis Kelsey 
he's obviously a unique character in himself. Um, How so? <laughs> just, just like, I told my wife that if I get stuck up here, we went to his uh, podcast last night down at KC Music City Hall, and uh, he just screams and everyone cheers. So if, I, if it gets kind of weird up here, and I'll just scream and you guys can all cheer, and, and then we'll be back on, on pace. So um, I'm glad your wife is here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so we've done that serial. We'll continue to look at different options uh, of different things that we can do. And so I think that might just kind of cue, because I think the serial's in here. We'll just show you a couple of commercials we've actually done with Patrick and Travis. <laughs> Some things just go together, like free delivery from Hy-Vee Isles Online with a Hy-Vee Plus Premium Membership. That's awesome. We got two more, I think we'll just show them real yeah. quick. Just go together, like free delivery from hy Isles Online with the hy Plus Premium Membership. Premium membership. So the unique story is you behind the scenes on all this stuff is we went to, to the concepts to, to Travis and Patrick's teams and all of them did actually just happen to be like it's always Travis's fault he doesn't have his product so the reason the third one that actually was done was the the holiday one with the gingerbread house and as we're talking through this Travis's people were like hey can he ever be the one that doesn't look like the loser on this like he forgot <laughs> something so they had to make his gingerbread house be way better uh, in that so it looked like he did something better than Patrick so kind of unique and this kind of leads, you know, we are talking about the product, but how we use the athletes, right? So for us, uh, a lot of people know hy -Vee. They obviously know Patrick around here. And so Patrick was actually the lead to start our e-commerce when we started that back in 2019 um, with that. And so you like, we like to use those guys to push something new. So I was online was brand new. So people were talking, obviously, Patrick's promoting this new thing that hy -Vee has. And so kind of that goes with this H-plus membership as we try to to build a membership is obviously Costco lives off the membership, a little bit different model, but Walmart Plus is growing like crazy, which has given them good market share. And so just trying to find uh, a different ways that we can keep and maintain that customer loyalty like we talked about. Are you gonna show the uh, other piece of creative? We can just show the other video. This I was think more it's so just, terrific. Th this was more just for me to get a shot and everything. And <laughs> so um, sometimes sports marketing is just lucky, right? And so uh, we had an employee 25 years ago at hy called Kurt Warner ended up having a decent career. He um, actually worked. He uh, actually worked at the Cedar Falls store, yes. And so um, and then he ended up going into arena football and then ended up, you know, winning the Super Bowl and having quite the career. And so they made a movie about him, nothing to do with Hy-Vee. Of course, they call Hy-Vee and ask if they can have a couple scenes or do stuff. And so uh, I try to sometimes say, I think I'm good at my job sometimes, and sometimes it's just pure luck. So then out of all of that, Peyton, Manning, Peyton Manning's team calls and says they want to do Peyton's places at our store and have Peyton working in the store. So it's just a, a short little clip and then there is uh, at the end of the thing I was hoping for my Hollywood career but it didn't end up going anywhere so you like the shelf right the self what do you like the Dalai Lama <laughs> you gotta call it in clean up on aisle two anyone you know Kurt I was thinking nobody's ever really answered Steve Martin's question from father of the bride hot dogs are sold in a pack of six buns and a pack of eight. Why is that? Who's behind that? You're digging too deep, man. Big Grocery has eyes everywhere. Excuse me, where can I find double A batteries? <laughs> hmm. Let me think. We got order all six. Um, don't quit your day job. Actually, I have Susan in a blaze of glory. Those are world champions. That was 
great. That is terrific. How about that? I mean, that so, so that ended up being great because that was like on his show of 15 minutes uh, of one of his episodes. And so um, from that standpoint, there's nothing better than the impressions we got that for, for nothing, just giving him the, the store space. And so, uh, like I said, that was me in a Tom Brady jersey. I was hoping for a Hollywood career, but it did not happen. So, uh, I, actually, to be honest, I was really good. We got two takes, really, but one without the water because I couldn't get wet. So we went through without the water and then that. So, yeah. Well, maybe you should think about a different agent. Hey, maybe. maybe. <laughs> I can help you with that. Okay. Um, what about um, game day where the home gating and the tailgating phenomenon? Where does, where does your brand play in that? Is yeah. that a big part of the sports strategy, like an event experience? Yeah, so, so obviously we have the deals with the corporate office and get these partnerships so that we can use IP and, and use all that stuff, right? And then the unique thing about our stores is we have stores everywhere. They're autonomous, so they really do their own thing. And so Kellen from the Chiefs here could speak on behalf of Kansas City or the folks here. If you walk into a Kansas City store, you know that we sponsor the Chiefs. And that's from bakery, that's to, for meats on game day, I mean tailgating packs, whatever you could, merchandise, whatever you could possibly imagine, um, they do. And so our stores are just amazing at what they do, and they do that on their own, whether it's for the college, for Iowa, or, or for the Chiefs. And so obviously, at the end of the day, that's what we are, we're groceries, right? And so that's why this place so well into sports is because it is, everyone, right? Whether they're coming to the game to tailgate or they're home gating at home, just enjoying the game, they're, they're always wanna come, we can make a celebration out of anything, right? And so come buy food. And so totally makes sense for us to be involved in that. And then some of the activation that we have, um, game day with the Chiefs, for example, is a, a tailgater of the game. And so we send a golf cart out and we find the person with the most private label high V brands and then they win a $500 gift card, they get to get up on the big screen. And so that's something we've done for many years with uh, the Chiefs. And I will say, because we, we do sponsor some other teams, but I'll give the Chiefs credit, there is nothing better than tailgating at, at Arrowhead, right? And it's just a way different atmosphere than a lot of other stadiums. So How definitely. So? How so? Well, you know, you get up to Minneapolis, and I love the Vikings, so if this ever gets seen anywhere, <laughs> um, it's just a different atmosphere up there, right? It's, they don't have the big lot to tailgate. It's just, it's just a way different environment for a game day yeah. than, than here with what we can push for trying to get customers to come in and buy all their stuff. Um, I wanted to ask you, so if you could put your old hat on at high V when you were an auditor and you were asking different executives at different companies, let's look at what you spent and scrutinize and is there an ROI? And I know sports is often a difficult ROI type of discussion. So now you're on the other side of the desk. So how, what, what do you show in terms of success metrics, KPIs, all of that stuff? Yeah, so I, well, I thought when I took the job over, I was gonna be like, I'm gonna solve this. I'll just give every <laughs> metric and show everything and show an ROI, and then I was like, three months in, I was like, I give up, I can't, it, it's tough, right? And so some of it you have to look at, and I, I kind of touched on some of it, is you're gonna do some of the colleges and because of the community play. There's also a unique piece, everyone has their own story with their business, well, obviously we're a grocery store that does catering, so as we get into partnerships with some of these colleges, we actually make more money off the colleges from what they have to come in and buy for catering than what we even spend on a, on a partnership, right? And we have that, they come to us because of the sponsor. So sometimes it just makes sense from a business standpoint that we're gonna do it. Um, there are certainly things in different sports that we look at that um, are gonna get debated between executives, and, and I get involved with that, obviously, on, on some of it. And so, so you're gonna go out and try to do the best valuation you can based on impressions and what assets you're getting on, on game day or digital um, from that standpoint. But uh, I think, for the most part, some of it's relationship to a lot of them we've been in for as long as we have, and we're, we love it, we think it's good, we know it's good. I mean, we see some sales and different things that we can do with these guys, and so from that standpoint, it makes it a little bit easier uh, to keep pushing the executives to do it. Great. And um, I know we've been speaking about big sponsorships like Chiefs and Vikings. Um, given where many of your stores are in, in rural areas, how, does your does your strategies also play into like hyper local types of sports initiatives? Yeah, absolutely. So in my role, you know, I oversee the, the bigger ones. I get the fun ones to get to go to the draft, to go to the Chiefs, and go to the Packers, and all that good stuff. Um, but we do a great job. I went back to the stores being autonomous. So the stores all have their own budget and they go out. So you probably wouldn't go to um, a town, especially in these smaller towns, you wouldn't go to the high school field and not see hy up on their scoreboard or them doing something for the local band um, and different things within the other sports programs. So from that standpoint, yes, we have that knocked down. That's just not as glamorous right. as, as some of this stuff. And so we'll continue to do that. I think 
Um, I think I mentioned it to you the other day, I think the unique piece that we haven't done a lot of that I think we'll look at in the future is even getting more into the youth level of the, of the soccer leagues and that kind of stuff and trying to brand you know, those stadiums and those types of things. Just to, obviously every night if you have 600 kids at a soccer field getting picked up by mom or dad and we have Hy-Vee signs up, hopefully you're thinking about stopping by at Hy-Vee and, and picking up pizza or Wahlburgers or sushi or Chinese. We have it all, so come get it um, <laughs> and, and eat there. So That's great. And then the um, uh, final question I have is about um, content. Uh, we've heard a lot of, about content throughout any of the uh, discussions today. Um, what could be your perspective of how Hy-Vee looks at content, whether they're pushing out, whether they're digesting in, just the overall culture? Yeah, well, it's a hot topic for us because, you know, I'm a, I have myself and another girl that works with me, and so that's our department, really, for sports marketing. We have our bigger marketing thing as well. Um, there are times I think that we would like to have a lot more content that we produce that's tied with the sports teams. Um, that's just like that wow moment or that, that something you put out on social that everyone loves. It's hard for us to create. So I think we're always looking for ways that how can we do something unique that's something that gets impressions, gets people talking. And so uh, again, it all ends up, we start reaching out to our partners a lot. So is the Chiefs, are they creating something that we can jump onto and have some, some brand inclusion or something with that? Uh, we had a really cool video. I wish I should have actually put it on here um, because Caitlin Clark blew up so much and it was the most, uh, probably the best post we've ever had in any of our social channels. Because again, we're still trying to target people to come in and shop. But we did for Caitlin Clark, um, we got Kirk Cousins to make a video, Patrick Mahomes to make a video, um, Mark Wahlberg, um, a couple other people that did a video and we kind of mashed it up. How is Mark Wahlberg? Committed associate with Ivy. Yeah, I'll get to that. Yeah, yeah. I'll get to Mark Wahlberg here in a second. Speaking so, of your agent, your yeah, new yeah, agent. Yeah, yeah. So we, we did this video and it just millions of impressions for us, which is a lot, especially around sports, um, with Caitlin just wishing her good luck from, from some of those top athletes. And so we're always trying to figure out how to get the right content to and, and do that. And um, still remember, we're trying to sell groceries. And so how does it help us push that? And, and so I will say to kind of feed off the women's stuff as well that H&R Block talked about too. It's pretty amazing um, and reasons why everyone should be supporting women's sports because there is, people love it, right? And we need to help push it and take it to the next level of sports. And so kind of an interesting fact, unfortunately with social media, people always want to say bad things, whether you're, whatever company you're in. So we're a grocery store, we still get a lot of negative comments. We did about a week and a half of Caitlin Clark comments on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And there was not one negative comment. I mean, it was just complete support of her and the Iowa team. And so that was awesome to see. Um, when usually the world of social media, you get a lot of negativity. So Mark Wahlberg is, uh, we've done a lot of stuff with him. Uh, so he has performance inspired health line. So we carry his health, uh, health bars and protein and that kind of stuff in our stores. And then uh, we've, we've gone in into our stores in, in our stores, Heidi specifically and changed and made a bunch of them a Wahlburgers. So his family owns the Wahlburgers mm -hmm. restaurant. And so we have those inside of our stores uh, throughout our eight states. Uh, expansion into new markets and then um, what does the grocery store of the future look like? Uh, I wish I had the answer. I'd be a consultant and make millions. But uh, no, I think it's, it depends. Again, when we talked about the, where we're going now, we're going to build into Indianapolis and we're going to build into Nashville as kind of new areas we're going into. And that model now is to have 115 to 120,000 square foot store, which would be a little bigger than where you know our biggest store is today. But again, it's just that convenience and having um, everything you need. But I think you still have, especially you know, where we are with, within the Midwest, you still have these small towns that need to be serviced and, and be able to have stuff for their customers. So that's a different model. How, do, how do you go into these new markets when I'm assuming the Kroger's of the others already have embedded sports relationships? How, how, yeah. yeah, that's a great question. So um, we did. I, we actually announced Indianapolis, and I tried to call the Colts, and I called Nashville. And um, when we were going to Nashville, unfortunately, all of those were you know, they're taken already with exclusivity in the grocery area. So we'll try to do different ways uh, of to, to push our brand there, and um, we'll figure it out. So I think she's kicking us off. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, we have time for outside questions from the, the team? Okay. I have one question. So first of all, first time being exposed to the Hybe brand out from Texas, where kind of HUB is kind of that. Sure. No. They're a great chain. We're friends with them because they don't compete with us. So. <laughs> catch one thing you mentioned though about the 21 year olds where you kind of expected them 10 years from now to be that customer right we get a challenge about the retail space of like hey roi roi kpis like kind of death by numbers at some point right yeah. we all got to prove that we're, and that's a discussion that i've had of like hey we may not get this customer now but give us five years six or seven years we want to but the challenge is how do you 
improve that value then and there on a weekly basis right when it comes to reporting. So how do you kind of get through that challenge? Yeah, I mean, I think that's fair. I mean, then that's kind of where we're coming from that background of accounting. It's hard. I don't think we always do prove ROI, right? I don't think that you can always say, hey, truly this is paying for today. And some of you have to trust that you're, you're bringing these. You know these are, these are going to be grocery shoppers. I mean, that's the good thing about our business compared to other ones is you have to get groceries, right? You have to come buy them and, and do it. So um, we need to hit those people now so we can try to build their loyalty because they've got to shop somewhere and we just want them to be us and not Walmart or an Aldi. So I don't have a perfect answer for you to say, hey, I can go prove something. I think you just, you know that they're going to be shoppers in the future and you've got to win them over. Okay. Thank you. Thank you both.